Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Pebble. And today I am so happy to introduce you to my friend and an advocate for the earth like no other. She is Lacey, and she's also known as Teach Go Green. And really, that is how I found her. Um, she was uh, came across my, I'm not exactly how she came across my feed, but I am so glad she did because she was teaching about the environment in the real world and sharing it on her Instagram feed at just the right time because I needed a teacher for my daughter for whom I was homeschooling. And she became my daughter's homeschool science teacher for a year until she decided to bring a munchkin into the world, the cutest <laughs> little girl in the world. Anyways, so, um, but again, she is a true blue environmental educator, and I'll let her share more about that. And then we'll talk about uh, what we're going to discuss today. So Lacey, take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much. I had so much fun teaching your daughter. It just, it lights me up being able to teach other people about the environment. I am, I feel like I kind of fell into environmental education. I didn't even know it was a thing. And then when I started doing it, I was like, oh, this is my thing. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do, which is really amazing. I talk to my husband about it all the time. And I'm like, I just kind of lucked into my passion. I didn't really know this is what I was passionate about. I just kind of fell into it and I'm really good at it. You are. You are really good at it, for real. Uh, you got Izzy really excited about um, we started composting and we learned better about um, doing something I had never heard of, which is a trash edit. And um, we, I will say, post move have gotten a little sloppier and I noted it by doing an accidental edit this week um, because my husband sometimes does the Homer Simpson where it's like oh I'll I'll let the, we'll take the trash out we'll take the trash out and it's like overflowing so you need to separate it and I was like we're getting sloppy again plus this means we're eating too much processed food which isn't good as well and so I thought it's time to to make some changes. Oh, by the way, I'm talking to Lacey tomorrow. This is good timing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been doing environmental education for about eight years now. Um, and it's like you said, I do it in the real world. And so I teach students of all ages from pre-K on up including homeschool. So I was super excited to have like an opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one experience that I got to have with Izzy because I don't get that very often. You know, I'm teaching like classes and things like that. And I also really enjoyed the aspect of being able to create things based on her interests and like based on things that she wanted to learn more about. And so she was able to guide kind of what I was introducing her to. And the trash audits are so much fun. I think that they sound a little weird because it's like, what is that? But essentially what it is, is you look through your trash and you make an assessment of what you're throwing away. Is it a lot of packaging? Is it a lot of food? Is it a lot of items that you actually could recycle? And then you kind of dive into that. So what does the food that you're throwing away say about you? What could you be doing with that packaging? Are there other things that you could buy or different items that you could buy that has better packaging? Could you recycle some of that packaging or compost it? And I can definitely agree with you in terms of moving. So we moved, let's see, October, November, December, November. Maybe. Yes, I'm using my fingers. We moved about five months ago. And um, when we moved, it's like, I don't know, it's like, you're so stressed out and consumed with everything. You do get sloppy, like things just fall through the cracks and you're choosing convenience every time. Yeah. And you definitely can start accumulating in ways that you don't intend to and kind of forget those eco-conscious steps that you've tried to so hard to incorporate. 
And that's why when I'm talking about environmental education in general, I always say, give yourself grace and make the best decisions you can for your family at that time. Because whatever's going on in your life today may be completely different tomorrow. And tomorrow you might need to go get that, I don't know, that squeezy in the plastic container for your kid because you're on the go and that's all you have time for, you know, but then you can plan better for next week and maybe you can make some homemade applesauce in the reusable container for your kids. Um, so it definitely just depends and we have to give ourselves grace and like you did just check back in and see how we're doing. And that's one of the things I want to share with everyone that I really love about Lacey and um, she and I have a mutual friend, Isabel, whom we had a few weeks ago and you might want to check back to um, see that video as well because that they have a shared philosophy which is that anything you can do is better than nothing. Obviously do as much as you can because um, it matters, but it's a no judgment zone if you're doing what you can. And every, every parent knows some days are harder than others. And so, yeah, it, there's, she lives in the real world and her, I love her reels. And sometimes she shows where it was a day in which, no, <laughs> It was not a perfect environment <laughs> and sustainable day. And um, I I really respond to that because I um, am older than both of them. And I'm good with that. I, I, I'm not ashamed of my age. Wiser. You're wiser. I am wiser or I'm trying to be. Um, and I, but I learned from them as well because my generation was a very wasteful generation and uh i'm i own that and we are learning and it's okay to learn from the younger as well as the older we teach what we can teach and we learn what we can learn and uh we were a very disposable society and one of the big changes i've made in my life that i've shared very gladly on this show is thrifting and sustainable clothing and such but i i had a germ thing and so disposability was something that i felt good right like it's gone it's, and so one of the things that i have been trying to incorporate is more cloth and less paper um and so uh that's something that i I've, I've learned from you is i've 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 slowed down my paper towel habit it's not fully gone there's places that i've still paper towel feels right but i'm working on it um i'm not fully gone with them but i but um that's one of the things though that i like about it is that you don't make me feel horrible coming to your site and i want people to know that because i do think that there are places on the internet where it's an all or nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um I, I think that we have to meet people where they are so they can grow and learn right um I agree. also if cloth diapers had been what they are now i would have done it I would have done it. Okay. It was still the pretty much, it was the end of the service period when I was coming on. There weren't many of these cute little things with the movable and no, it was still like the, and you put it in the, and it. So let me just say my mom, um, when I, I knew that I wanted to floss diaper even before I had kids. I just, I just knew that that was just what I was going to do. And, you know, my mom's like, just wait till you have a kid, you know, you're saying that now and lo and behold, I cloth diapered and she is amazing because she watched, she still watches my son. Um, and when then I was full time working and so she would essentially have him all day. And when I brought him over in cloth diapers, she was so skeptical now my mom is a cloth diaper advocate. She will tell anyone that they really aren't as difficult as they used to be. They're cute. And honestly, to me, they're even better. They're better for your baby's skin. I absolutely love cloth diapers and I've made her an advocate. And she is, she's really my inspiration sometimes when I think about how I communicate these messages to people, because 
she's one of those reasons I like to meet people where they are because there's some things she's just not going to do. She's just not going to make all the switches and all the swaps because she is very much into certain brands that she agrees with. Um, brand recognition is super huge. And I totally understand that. So then the question is, well, what can you do? So for example, she will cloth diaper with me, but she's not giving up her paper towels. <laughs> And, and that's okay. It's, it's again, it's like, you have to make whatever decisions are best for your family. And then think about your family as well. So like my dad, on the other hand, my dad's pretty much on board with anything. So he will even use towels, like reusable towels at home. And my mom still uses her paper towels. And sometimes it's like that too. You know, there's some swaps that I've made that my husband just can't get on board with. And that's okay. That doesn't mean he's a bad person or he doesn't care about the environment. That's just a non-negotiable for him. And so he's still making small steps. He's still the compost king at our house. He's still doing things. It just may not be everything. And we have to leave space for that because at the end of the day, we also have to think about the fact that a lot of these corporations are the ones that have those big carbon emissions. They're the ones that are responsible for a lot of what we're seeing in terms of climate change. And so, yes, we make an impact and yes, our individual actions matter, but we should not be at each other's throat about it or upset with each other about changes when really we need to ask more from these corporations and our government as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and, I've I've learned so much from you and and directly and indirectly because from you I was inspired and I started choosing to learn more about um the subject as a whole uh and just an organizations businesses how things are done having moved cities I've learned more I, I live in a much greener city it turns out Buffalo New York is a very green city it has to do with the fact that we live off of Niagara and that's that's our water that's our electricity that's everything so it's like life here so they take it very seriously and um and the subtleties and things that that creates like for example, I love sparkling water. That's what I drink because I like to drink a lot of water, but I can't because it upsets my stomach. So I drink sparkling water. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to buy cans because I know they recycle cans very well, except the cans come in a box that is not really cardboard like you would think. You can't recycle the box because it's plastic covered. And I only knew that because Buffalo takes their recycling very seriously. So there's there is a thing on the thing that's, uh, uh, on the paper they give you that says you can't recycle that. So then I'm like, oh, maybe I should get the bottles because more water comes in it, but then they're plastic. So then I literally sought out getting the glass bottles. Mm -hmm. So that because they do recycle, the, but it was so much energy involved. And I'm like, well, maybe I should go to the soda stream, but then I have to get the CEO. You know, it's just I remember as a kid, and and this is where my age comes in. We used to get soda in glass bottles that you returned to the company, and the onus was on them. Yep, they took care of it. They reused the bottle, mm -hmm. but it. But more importantly, the onus was on them to take care of it. It wasn't on us. Yes. And how whatever turned out, turned out. You know, now it's like, well, they they just dis dispose of it and it's cheaper for them just to keep remaking than, than dealing with it. But once upon a time, they own that. The bottle said property of the Coca-Cola company or property of Dr. Pepper. And you were supposed to return it for a deposit, but it, because it went back to them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that when we went to plastic, it changed because it was so cheap. They didn't care about it. And not only is it a pollutant and not only is it hanging around forever and all of that, but it stopped being their job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the worst thing that happened is that these large companies no longer took an interest in what happened once it left. 
Mm -hmm. And I think if we could go back to them having some ownership, I think it would get solved much more quickly. I I agree. It's it's now consumer responsibility because even some of those items that are tougher to recycle, there's programs that you can recycle these items, which is amazing. You know, it's super exciting. I'm like, okay, I can send it back, but it's still on me right. to collect all of my items and send it back to the companies, which again, it's it's still taking steps in the right direction. We're still happy that the the company is doing something about it. But, but you're a busy mom, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have lots of space and time to keep up with it. <laughs> and it's just like a certain yogurt company that in October makes a big deal about their lids um, to for donations for uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to save your lids and mail them to them. Why can't they just go by how many lids they sell, right? Um, instead of asking you to wash your lids, put them in an envelope and mail it to them, okay? It's the same kind of thing, but the onus is now on you. And yes, it's better. It's better that they're trying. But, you know, we we were talking about being a busy mom, or, mm -hmm. or dad, parent, let's just go with parent, parent yeah. caretaker, because I know that there are some really awesome dad caretakers, so I don't want to leave them out, um, but you're, and you have to have the space, and you're not going to just send two or whatever, you're going to wait till you've got enough to make the trip to ship it, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's hard. And we're not saying then let's not try. I'm just saying that we need to encourage maybe grocery stores to create more centers for collections, something. There has to be a better way to create a collective um, for collection, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, something to, to support busy people because we shouldn't even limit that to parents, but to, to make some of this happen. Yeah, I, I think about it in a few ways. So to make it better, I guess, for myself is um, if I have to do a return for something else, all the returns are happening. So even when I think about like my donations for Goodwill, honestly, I just kind of stick everything to a corner. And even if I don't have time at that moment to organize it all and have little cute separate piles, I know everything over there needs to go okay. It needs to go to Goodwill. It needs to go back to the plastic bag recycling. I need to take it to UPS to return it, whatever it is. Um, so I just shove it in a corner until it's time to deal with it. But I know those things in the corner need to go out. Um, that's that's one thing I do. Another thing is to think about, and that kind of goes back into the trash audit, when we think about, okay, well, what can I buy that I don't have to deal with the packaging? And so I know everybody can't compost at home or maybe I, maybe doesn't want to compost at home, but that's a great outlet for me. I can take items and certain packaging and I can compost it. And then for me, then my it's going away, but it's actually being broken down and recycled. And now it's fertilizer and soil for my garden. Um, so that's something that I consider too. Like, what can I do with the packaging? Like if I know that I don't have time to then you know, take it somewhere to be recycled. Can I buy something that doesn't include packaging or as much packaging? Um, and then another thing is they do have some of those drop-off centers. So the one that's on the top of my head is Whole Foods. Oh, but Target has it too. They have like certain bins that you can put different things in. So they'll have like a plastic bag section and then they'll have a recycle section and then they'll have a landfill section. And so depending on what you have, you can put them in certain bins, which is absolutely amazing. It makes me really happy. Love me some Target, man. <laughs> they are really, actually, they are um, a very forward-thinking company on a lot mm -hmm. of fronts and they they do deserve a show and I thank you for that because those are things that we can do that are practical and I do think it's a reminder that it takes a little effort but 
when you're in the grocery store, think about, look at the packaging, you know, um, for example, okay, I need a throw in pizza. Well, sometimes the store pizza actually has less packaging than the DiGiorno, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they make it up right there and they just do the one wrap instead of the wrap plus the plastic covered cardboard, which is not recyclable. <laughs> I have learned it's not cardboard, for example. But, you know, even just taking that moment, even if you're going to need the convenience food, then um, it's still giving you an option about um lessening it for example or maybe you um want to just get the the make up your own you know yeah and that's that's a really good point because a lot of times and again it, it it's a time thing you right. know you have to consider the time but a lot of times making your own saves you so much it saves you money it's usually healthier for you and it's cheaper um, and it saves on the packaging. So one example for us is for for a long period of time for my daughter, we made our own wipes. And I that might sound like it's super labor intensive, but it's literally just the cloth rags that we use, you know, to bathe her when she's a baby. And we add some water and oil and witch hazel and a little bit of Dr. Bronner soap, and they're good to go. And I don't have to buy wipes again. And of course, you know, sometimes, you know, it's convenient to buy wipes, but I have these wipes at home that I can reuse over and over and over again. And now I don't have to spend the, I don't know, $5 a week or whatever it is to keep wipes in the house because I can just make them at home myself. And I think that's something that's nice to point out because for so many people being eco-friendly, sustainable, a lot of parts of it seem uh, out of reach. Mm -hmm. You know, they think they hear the words whole foods and they're like, nope. nope yeah. Nope. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I get that, I, mm -hmm. you know, um, there are things that I cannot afford as a part, you know, um, when a dozen eggs is $3.99, or $8, depending on how they're caged, I am sorry, I have to buy the $3.99 as much as I would love to buy the $8. And I understand the mechanics of the more of us that buy this kind, the more it brings it down. There's just, there's just a pocketbook issue, you know. But when you point out that there are ways that they actually, you know, can create something that the same set of wipes has basically been your whole whole set of wipes the entire time that she's been a baby I know how much wipes cost I mean you're talking <laughs> hundreds of dollars that you have saved now you can buy the eggs yeah right exactly exactly <laughs> you know I mean but that's that's something that that people aren't told that isn't spotlighted a lot the ways that sustainability can save your money i know that it's i started um sustainable dressing for my children purely cost based purely mm -hmm. um to be able to afford quality clothing for them and then it just became an obsession the fact that it happened to be sustainability was a side note that I fell in love with, but it wasn't the driving. Thing. So it's, it's a, you know, whatever it's, it's an extra benefit for some people, but it's one that ought to be spotlighted more. I think. I, I agree. And, and I do try to talk about that a lot on my social media, just even so, you know, I got bit by the spring cleaning bug, you know, so reorganizing. <laughs> you know, who lives for spring, spring, spring. And so, you know, I'm reorganizing all of these drawers and things. And I see all of these beautiful reels that have people like with these amazing containers, you know what I'm talking about, right? And they're like pouring everything into the containers. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to go out and buy all of these plastic containers. Like, what can I do? 
And so I found all of these wooden containers that my kids' toys come in. And, you know, they just want the toys inside. They don't want the wooden thing. Beautiful. I've put, I've organized our medicines, my teas, our little stirs, and it's absolutely beautiful. And so I think an aspect of eco-conscious living that we forget about sometimes is being creative and knowing that a lot of times we have we have the things that we need already. We may need to think about them differently, repurpose them, do a little cutting, um, do a little mix in, but we have a lot of what we need already. Shop your home first. It, it's a lesson that I've been sharing on my thrifting that unfortunately I don't always remember, but it's a good one. It well, is. this has been really awesome. And I think, Lacey, we could probably talk for several more hours and I would enjoy every minute of it. But is there one last tip um, or thought you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, so I've said it before, but I'll say it one more time to just keep in mind that you are making the best eco-conscious decision that you can for your family at any given time. And whatever that decision is today may be different tomorrow and may have been different yesterday, but that's okay. I love it. And that's one of the many reasons that I love Lacey. And I really do recommend you go check out Teach Go Green on Instagram. And I will make sure that all of her handles are down below so you can um, check her out because I really think that she puts a positive spin on all of this. And it's hopeful. It doesn't help us to raise up our hands and say it's all over. It's not all over. And we have children and and hopefully many generations to come. And this is our gift to them. So let's take care of it. And um, yeah, and that's what the pebble is about is positive change. So thank you, Lacey. And thank you guys for joining us today. And if you enjoyed it enough to come visit us again, which I hope you did, I hope you will push that little subscribe button below. Either way, have a wonderful day. Thank you.